Hey there, it's CJ Willie, and I'm cracking a pack. Today is pack number 10 of my Magic the Gathering Rivals of Ixalan Bundle Bingo. Check out the preview video on my Rivals of Ixalan Bundle. I have added the link to the preview video in the description below. As I crack the pack, my viewpoint will be from a very casual Magic the Gathering player perspective. It will not be the viewpoint of Pro Tour or even Friday Night Magic Grinder. It will be a kitchen table game of magic having fun with friends' opinion. Let's take a look at the bingo card. In pack number 4, we pulled a Legion Lieutenant, which also gave us the free square. And in pack number 5, we pulled a Legendary Enchantment, Storm the Vault. Then in pack number 7, we pulled a Legendary Elder Dinosaur, Nezahal, Primal Tide. Finally, in pack number 9, we hit bingo. We pulled two great cards from the pack. Curious Obsession gave us bingo, and a Lend of the Dusk Rose, Sweeten the Dill. In the final pack, blackout isn't going to happen, but we still have an outside shot that we could get two more bingo squares. Let's take a look at what we need to pull. Wayward Sword Tooth. Path of Discovery, a Foil Rare, or Mythic Rare. All right, let's get to cracking pack number 10. Sun Sentinel, 2 mana, 1 on a white, Human Soldier, 2-2, two, two, has Vigilance. This is your 22nd, 23rd card in your draft deck. Fanatical Firebrand, single red mana, Goblin Pirate at 1-1, one, one, has Haste. You can tap and sacrifice it. It deals 1 damage to target creature or player. Fanatical Firebrand was a very useful common and limited there are many flyers that had a one butt, and it also triggered a lot of your enrage abilities with your dinosaurs. Swaggering Corsair, three mana, two and a red, human pirate at two two, has raid. Swaggering Corsair enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it if you attacked with a creature this turn. With red being a very aggressive color, it's relatively easy for you to trigger raid and have Swaggering Corsair come down as a three three for three. Fathom Fleet Border, 3 mana, 2 and a black, Orc Pirate at 3-3. Three, three. When Fathom Fleet Border enters the battlefield, you lose 2 life unless you control another pirate. You definitely want to play this in a pirate deck so that you can get full value 3-3 three, three for 3. In Limited, it was easy to build a pirate deck either in blue-black or black-red. Raska Frillback, 3 mana, 2 and a green. Dinosaur at 4-2. In Limited, this card slotted very well into the 4 power greater matters theme. Aside from that, this was something you either kept as your 23rd card or you cut it. Traveler's Amulet, single generic mana artifact. You can pay one generic, sacrifice it, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. In Limited, Traveler's Amulet was a card that you would use to splash your third color. Maybe you're playing pirates, maybe you're playing dinosaurs, and you needed to go find your splash mana. Martyr of Dusk, 2 mana, 1 and a white, Vampire Soldier at 2-1. When Martyr of Dusk dies, create a 1-1 one, one white Vampire Creature token with lifelink. In your limited Vampire deck, this was a great turn too. Martyr of Dusk was a great chump blocker in that it would keep you alive until later in the game when you were able to play your bigger threats. Dark Inquiry, 3 mana, 2 and a black sorcery. Target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose an online card from it. That player discards that card. In Limited, this is even a little overcosted. You want this effect at 1 or 2 mana, but it's not too bad to hold on until later in the game and hopefully snag their bomb, creature, or disruptive spell. Soul of the Rapids, 5 mana, 3 and 2 blue. Elemental at 3 2. It has flying and hexproof. Soul of the Rapid was a nightmare to deal with in Limited. With Hexproof, it was extremely hard to get off the board. And if you're able to put an enchantment or an artifact on it, it easily took over the game. Pitiless Plunderer, 4 mana, 3 and a black, Human Pirate at 1-4. Whenever another creature you control dies, create a colorless treasure artifact token with Tap It, Sacrifice This Artifact, add 1 mana of any color to your mana pool. This is pretty cool because it's one of the more pricier uncommons in the set, about a $5 card. In Limited, it was a really fun card to play. In Black, usually your creatures are going to die, 
they would be producing mana that you could use for future spells. Riverwise Augur, 4 mana, 3 and a blue, Merfolk Wizard at 2-2. When Riverwise Augur enters the battlefield, draw 3 cards, then put 2 cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. Essentially, this is a creature with Brainstorm stapled onto it. Riverwise Augur is great in a blue-red spells deck where you want to filter through your deck, find your draw spells, your direct damage spells, your manipulation spells. After that, it basically served as a chump blocker. Final and commas Cacaphodon, 4 mana, 3 and a green, Dinosaur at 2-5, has enraged whenever Cacaphodon is dealt damage, untap target permanent. In limited, this is uncommon I wasn't very high on. As a 2-5, it can clog up the ground. There were some tricks you could play with it. If you're able to ping it or deal some damage, you could untap one of your creatures for a surprise block. You could untap one of your lands to give you an ability to play another spell. It just never seemed to pan out as a very strong uncommon. Okay, for our final rare or mythic rare, will we be able to mark off a last bingo square? We have Silent Gravestone. Single generic mana artifact. Cards and graveyards can't be the targets of spells or abilities. You can pay four generic mana, tap it, exile Silent Gravestone, and all cards from all graveyards, draw a card. In limited, this was a card that did you absolutely nothing. It was a card that was printed more for constructed to deal with some of the graveyard shenanigans in Amonkhet and Hour of Devastation. When this card went around in draft, it kept circling the table, and if it came to you as a last pick, well, that's how you drafted it. And we did get a foil out of the bundle. I was worried that we wouldn't get a foil. Thrashing Brontodon, three mana, one generic, two green, dinosaur at three, four. You can pay a generic mana, sacrifice Thrashing Brontodon, destroy target artifact or enchantment. In limited, this was a nice card to have. For three mana, you get a three, four on the ground. That's great stats already. And later in the game, if you needed to deal with your opponent's pesky enchantment or artifact, you could pay the mana, sacrifice Thrashing Brontodon, and take care of that annoying permanent on your opponent's side. And then we have a Swamp and a Sapperling token. My favorite card or best card out of the pack is going to be between Pitiless Plunder and Riverwise Augur. I think in draft, I really enjoyed playing Pitiless Plunderer. There are a couple of reasons why I like playing it. First, if you built your deck right, your creatures were going to die. It was going to give you more mana. You could utilize that mana to get to your bigger bombs or awesome spells. Second, if you're able to continue to create that additional mana from your treasure tokens, it forced your opponent to have to deal with it. That's a bonus. If they're dealing with Pitiless Plunder, then they probably don't have a way to deal with your bomb when it hits the battlefield. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, please subscribe and share. Take some time to tell me in the comment section what was your favorite card or best card out of the pack. Until next time when I'm back with my review video of my Magic the Gathering Rivals of Ixlan bundle in Bundle Bingo.